Hello and welcome back to another Demis Helen tutorial. We're back again with the track build that we started about a month or so ago and we're going to look at building in some percussion elements this time around. So there is no plan on this, this is just going to be as I'm creating this. So I've not done anything prep wise beforehand to see which is the best way to show you. I'm just going to show you how I put that in. So we've got our sounds here, we've got Groove Agent already loaded, so if we just click that, we can use Groove Agent and you can use any drum machine, you can use samples straight onto the Doors Arranger if you want, there is no wrong or right way, but there are perks, obviously, of using like a drum machine, for example, with all the extras built in, that you can use to control your EQ, your filter, your amp mod, your pitch, everything like that. So we've got the kick drum in there, and we're going to load in some samples and when we're in here, we have our sections. So we're gonna use an open hat, a close hat, and a clap to start with. That's usually my workflow of just getting something there. And then we can start working with some rhythms and using percussion just to give it a bit of movement. Okay, so. I do like the sound of that one, so we'll stick that one in here for now, but I'm just going to put it further up so it's not uh, classed as the final sound. The sound of that one, so maybe that's going to stay there. So we've got two sounds there that we've picked, so that's absolutely fine. So let's pick now our closed hat. We're looking for things that are complementing each other, and the style of the track is quite fast. It's 138, so we want something that's got a little bit more grind on there. Okay, so that's going to do for now. We can change that out if we need to. And then let's pick a clap. So we're going to pick a clap, we're going to put that one there. That's got a little bit more transient detail, that's got a more length. It's got the transient. And we'll pick that one. So we'll, we'll pick between the ones that we want to use. And the first thing that we're going to do here is we have our kick drum going through the master out. So I'm going to set these two hats here by just holding shift. And you can see it's selected both of them. And if we right click, we can assign it to out number two. And then all three claps doing the same thing. And we're going to sign that to out number three. In Cubase, we can click this little arrow here and you can turn on all the different outs. And you can see, because we've assigned it, it's already outputted that to our mixer. So let's just jump into here. So you can see it's put two new sections here. So we'll call these hats and claps. So we can see exactly what's going on and we can apply our usual standard gain reduction there just to get things kick-started. Now we have those loaded, let's get some sounds in there. So I use the lanes view to add things in and out, it just saves on the hassle of loading extra tracks and routing them. What lanes does is give you that option to record different versions if you're recording live or have different MIDI parts but then only one of them's active at any one time if you wanted. But you can use it to layer up as well, and I find it pretty pretty intuitive. So we're going to loop this section here, drag that down. The only thing you can't do is label them, but it's obvious when you use the same technique. So you're always going to put your claps and then your hats, or your hats, then your claps. It depends on how you work. So there is our open hat. I'm just going to copy this one here, and we're just going to have a roll in 16ths on that closed hat. Perfect. So let's get these balanced first. So if we look into the mixer, this is what it sounds like. And the first thing that I always do is I jump in and I chop that lower end out that I don't need. Too thin and too tinny. It gives that perception it's really, really bright. Too much low end. Somewhere about there is sounding about right. I'm going to leave it on a 12 dB curve. And then we can check this on our scope of choice for stereo position. We're nicely mono compatible there. We've got no anti-phase issues. So that's all great. 
It's something that you're going to see in these videos a lot more now because a lot of people have asked about the phase and we did cover it in that video. So if you haven't seen that, I'll put the link on screen now for you. Okay, so we've got the hats here soloed. We've cut out that lower end that we don't need. As much as we can't hear it, we don't want to see it as well. We just need to tidy it up. We might roll that off a little bit higher later on. Okay, so let's get this volume level sorted. Let's mix in context. I'm happy about there, but we can modify the volumes within the plugin directly. So let's just jump in and get those hats tamed a little bit. So we want the closed hat to be a little bit less prominent, which is about right. And then on here, I'm just going to turn it down about a dB there. Just so they sit nicely. So we've got one dB on there and we've got minus six on that closed hat. Now what we can do in here as well and any other drum machine, we can start shaping this sound so we can have it shorter. Change the curve. So I'm going to have it sounding like that before it was quite open like this. And now it's got a more integrated feel. It's, it sounds like it's part of the track rather than just sitting on the top, which is a common problem with percussion. So hopefully you can overcome your percussion woes just by getting that balance right using the amp envelope to shape that sound. Okay, so now it is entirely up to you what you do with those hats from there. We can have a little bit of reverb washed over the top. We can have a bit of delay just to give it some groove, but we've gone for 16th, so there's no need for things like that. Not in my case anyway. So let's put our clap in. So on lane three, we're going to use our claps. Let's zoom in. And we'll start from C1. Okay, so the first two are sounding more appealing to me. If we use the first one, a little bit too muddy, but we could clear that up with some EQ. Uh, it's just there for a backup. I didn't really like that at the beginning. It was just something I chose because I thought it's got a bit of length in that. Okay, so let's solo the claps. And the first thing we're going to do is drag and drop the same EQ over here to tidy up. You can see it's naturally rolling off here. I just want a little bit less mid detail in there. Something that sounds about right, mixing in context, making sure that you've got synths and other elements playing and you can just hear where it needs to sit. I don't want to go overboard with over editing straight away. We just need to get these things sitting nicely into the mix and then you can start working forward on these things. Let's jump back into here. And we're using these two here. So we can add various things in here. We can add the curve in there to make sure that we've got a nice amp sound. And that one's a little bit too long for me. So I'm just going to drag that down to there. Just get the full length in. And then we can adjust the curve as needed. Let's just solo that one. sounding okay let's link it up with this one that one's fine as it is so I'm going to leave that this one's a little bit too dominant so let's just try turning it down can hear just by balancing the sounds we've started to get a lot more rounded sound it sounds like it's one sample rather than having two layered claps and the next thing we need to assess is the two clap sounds I would rather have this one a little bit offset just so we get a little bit of depth in our clap so the first thing to do is hit J to turn off our quantized grid we can zoom in and then we can just offset that a little bit like that maybe a little bit too much let's just bring that halfway back to what it was 
That sounds a little bit better. It gives way for the transient of the first one and the second one adds a little bit more body onto that clap. And it just sounds a little bit more full and natural. So now we have this. So the hats are sitting nicely, the clap isn't too great. So let's just have a look at what's happening with the clap. Let's first thing check our scopes. Everything is good, everything is as it should be. And it is down to the shape of the sound. So for the purpose of this demo, I will use a secondary EQ. So you can see exactly what I'm doing. And I'm listening for the sound that's making that clap really stand out too much. Okay, so let's have a look at what we can do to hear that sound. So I'm just going to make a cut here. We'll drag it down here. I'll just narrow that cue a little bit. And I'm just going to go a little bit drastic, minus nine. And then I'm going to just drag that over whilst the clap's playing to see what frequency is really standing out. I can hear it, but just to position where it is. We're listening for that nasally sound. I'm just listening for certain sounds. I'm just making adjustments as we go along. So you can see, I'm just going to leave that there. I'm not going to go too drastic with that though for now. We'll just leave it at say minus four. It just pushes it a little bit, but you can hear just adding that cut, it makes it sound a little bit brighter. So listen again carefully with headphones, and you'll be able to hear that just removing certain frequencies, even as drastic as this is, you'll hear that it just sounds a little bit brighter because your ears are being more focused towards that section, which is the higher frequencies. And because we're reducing that section, which seems to be the most audible perceived section, the loudest part, it forces you to hear the next part, which is automatically the brighter, the higher sounds. And it just makes it sound brighter without actually having to raise any sort of level. So let's just have a listen to how that sounds in context. And we need to unsolo this one. You can hear that it does push that clap, it makes it sound a little bit thinner and it also makes it sound a little bit brighter. So we need to balance the two out. If we start to reduce this, we're going to get more of that body that we didn't want to be as present before. So there's a few things that we can do to combat that. So let's bring this up as it's playing. bring in an 18 dB low cut. So the adjustment I made there whilst it was playing, I've gone for a high pass cut there. So we're cutting out some more of the lows instead of having a notch cut out. It just seemed a little bit too artificial 
and the more you cut it, the more body you remove, but at the same time, it just got brighter and brighter, and it's sounding more nasally and just too tinny. So just chopping that off and just lowering the volume. So you can see initially where it was in grey, and then this low cut has reduced its volume. So you can see it's dropped it quite away. That's at least a decibel in most cases and more drastic down here. And then I've just added a little bit of brightness and it's all about just using your ears. You use the certain techniques, but just play it by ear, listen to your mix. How does it fit? What does it need? Then you can identify if you've got the wrong clap or you need to adjust the way you are EQ in your sound. We don't want to go crazy with our EQ. We just want to make sure that we are equalizing the sound and making sure everything is nice. So for now, I'm happy it's a little bit too tinny, so I am going to remove this for now. Now comes the question with the claps is compression. So we are going to put a compressor on, and again, we'll use Pro Q, uh, Pro C2 this time to demonstrate this. Keeps it easy, clean, and visual. So we're going to put it on classic so it's just acting like a classic compressor and we have our four knobs here which is threshold ratio attack and release these are the main ones that we are going to control so we can ignore everything else for now so the threshold we're just going to turn to zero so it's not trying to compress anything and then the ratio will just set to one to one so it's doing absolutely nothing and we'll return these two to zero so most compressors you're probably going to find like this so to start with because it's a clap I'm just going to go for something like a 5 to 1 ratio to start with, so something as close as we can get. And now we want the transient of the clap to come through. We don't want that to be compressed or squashed too much, so that's where we raise the attack. So let's just raise it to 2 milliseconds to start with, and that will tell the compressor not to start immediately, but give it a 2 millisecond delay before the compression is applied, which will let that transient pop through. Release is exactly the same. How quickly is it going to stop and shut down the compressor? And we'll set that again quite slow. So we'll set that to 10 milliseconds. So it's shutting down pretty quickly. As soon as the sound's finished, it's gone. And it's returning back to volume. And now we can dial the threshold in. First thing you will notice, that transient has become more prominent. We can hear a lot more of that transient than we can when this is bypassed. We can turn auto gain off as well. And it makes the clap sound a lot thicker as well. You can hear a lot more body after the clap, whereas before. almost like we've lengthened the clap. And these are some of the settings that you can use a compressor to your advantage to get that nice controlled sound from your claps and various other bits of percussion as well. Let's activate this again. We'll put auto gain back on. We're going to open the release. And now it's giving way for the sound to last a little bit longer than it did before. going to increase the ratio here so let's double the ratio to 10 to 1 so it's really slamming down that sound that's as close as we'll get for now and now we can hear there's a lot more body in that clap So now we're getting a more integrated sound. We've got control over our clap. We can just now move around the attack and the release to get the desired sound that we want. And at the same time, we do have the hard and soft knee, so how hard the compressor is going to apply the settings. So if you can see this curve here, this is the knee, 
and you can see it's pretty curved it's just average because it's between soft and hard if we have a hard knee it's at the literal can be a 90 degree angle depending on the settings that you've got but that's a pretty sharp angle so the, the compressor is going to be really snappy and really hard whereas soft is going to give it a nice gradual fade into the sound so you'd use that for slower sounds like vocals and pads and things like that I've returned the knee to the middle for this demo anyway. So we've got the clap and we've shaped our sound and we've just left auto gain on for now. And paying attention to the outs, you can see it came in at minus 10. It supplied a minus 7.6 reduction and it's coming out at minus 6. So we have increased the volume. So let's turn auto gain off and we'll get these balance switches coming in at minus 10 and back out at minus 10. It's looking like it needs a plus 3 dB there. So let's go for a 2.7 for now. we won't use the wet gain we will use the output level here at 2.8 so we've matched our exact ins and outs there which keeps the gain staging all the way through I don't necessarily want it at minus 10 now we have a nice balanced clap got a little bit more full of a sound we can start adding reverb and you can put the reverb before the compressor so it really accentuates the reverb or you can put it after really does depend on that so let's just add a little bit of reverb and we'll use super massive just so you can obviously use a free reverb as well to follow along we're going to turn the mix down let's just go first to reverbs and we'll go to large Let's go to Splashy Synth for a second. Let's just have a listen. Okay, so there's a little bit too much there. So I'm just going to drop the width. I'm going to drop the mix to about 35. Turn feedback down. And I'm going to chop out some of the lows. And if you look again here... We've chopped them off about 900 hertz here. So if there's any artifacts that have been added in, it's just good good practice. Just get it up to around 900 hertz, and then it's not reverberating any of those lows that might come through. Okay, so it's not the best reverb sound in the world for this particular clap, but let's just have a listen to how that changes our sound. very dry very centered but just having that splash of reverb you can't really tell it's there at that mix percent you can hear that it just seems to soften it a little bit but it makes it fit into the track it gives it a position and enables it to sit in with the rest of the environment that you're creating as the track And again, don't forget that you can use volume shapers such as Evade or LFO tool to make sure that the whole sound has closed down and shut off and gone quiet. And you can use automation as well if you wanted to, to shut down Valhalla so you could turn the mix down or the feedback down so it literally stops the reverb every time so it's fresh. There's all little things that you can do to control your sound. So let's have a look at the hats quickly again. We've not done much there. We've done a lot of clap processing. We can do the same thing with the compressor. So let's jump into Proceed 2. And we can see here we've got the same settings. So let's turn all of these off. So that one's that way. Okay, so the return to normal. We'll put that on classic. And we'll turn auto gain off for now. So this is it coming in. And again, let's go for a 10 to 1 to start with. 
very drastic. We want the transients to come through again because we've got a, an open hat that's really hard hitting and we've also got that rolling 16 so we do want that attack. So again let's open that up to about one millisecond. Let's go for two milliseconds on that particular instance. And I'm going to shut it down pretty quickly so the release is just up a little bit. And let's pull the threshold down. So as a drastic example, you can hear now they all sound longer and squashed. You can see this is a legitimate technique to soften your sounds as well if you use it creatively. At this stage, you can use your sort of compression creatively because you're trying to shape the sound and trying to get a particular feel for your track. And these things help shape and soften your sound or add more attack. Let's dial that back. So we're just getting some sort of reduction that's in the region of seven. I was go for like the six to seven region. That will do for now. And let's have a listen to what the different ratios sound like. So let's half that ratio to five. It's less intense. Really intense at 100 to one. So for now, I'm going to go for a four to one on this. We're going to keep it fairly simple. It's not needing too much on there. And let's have a mess around with the attack and release. Okay, so what you was hearing there is if we turn that attack, you can see from the visuals as well, when we turn the attack up, it's letting more of that sound come through before the compressor starts to squash it down and control it. Same with the release. As soon as we open the release, it's telling the compressor to stay on longer and longer and longer till your release is in the, say, the 2,500 milliseconds that goes up to. And it stops the compressor reaching its 0 dB level. So when your sound is being compressed here, you can see that's, that curve that's going up is your curve to 0 dB, essentially. And we can shorten that curve like that. Or keep it really long. And you can see it never, ever returns to 0 dB. So we don't want to do that. We want something that's fairly long and just gives it a little bit of depth into the sound so say somewhere there and the attack I don't want too much bite coming through I want to smooth off that little bit of a transient it's sounding like I've got a happy medium at seven milliseconds so I'm happy with that I've gone very gentle on there so let's have a listen in context and then we'll turn this on and off sounds more integrated but it's a lot quieter and that is because we have it coming in at minus 9.8 which again is minus 10 and then this is coming out at minus 11 so let's give that a 1 dB boost. So the difference is you've got to decide what your sound sounds like so just before we continue playing this when the compressor is off, you've got really sharp, stabby sounding hats that really pronounced. So if you're wanting that really hard feeling, you're going to go a lot less harsh on the compression. You'll have a, a lower threshold, for example. And if you want them to sound softer and just a little bit more into the background of the track, you're going to apply a little bit more compression and attack.
And there we have it. That is usually where I end up with that sort of percussion, the hats and the claps. And then I would start building in some sort of percussive elements that might be in the form of like congos, bongos, things like that. But we're going to save that for another tutorial just because these have a few extra elements that you need to take into consideration before just plonking into your mix. And that brings us to the end of the tutorial. So I hope that gives you a little insight in how to just get your percussion started. As always, thank you very much for watching. Please leave a like and a comment and also hit the subscribe button and the bell icon so my videos are injected into your feed and you get to see them as soon as I upload. And I'll see you all in the next video.